Well, hey there. I just want to welcome you to my channel. My name is Crafty Kathy. I'm the owner and creator of Kids Vintage Farmhouse here in beautiful Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I'm so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft and spend a little time with me today. I've only got one month to get ready for the Strawberry Festival that's going to be in Dayton, Tennessee in May where I'm going to be a vendor. So I'm going to take y'all along with me and show you some of the easy projects that I sell in my booths. And we're going to have so much fun. They're very beginner friendly. So let's jump in. On my first project, I'm going to start off with this beautiful picture that I got at the thrift store a couple of years ago back when the prices were somewhat normal. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is just paint the front of this. I want it to be an off-white color. I absolutely love all those divots that's all the way around this frame. It's so pretty. So I'm going to give it a couple of coats of the DIY paint called Beadboard. It is my favorite off-white color. Now DIY paint is clay-based, so you have to seal it when you get finished painting. And usually it only takes me one coat to cover anything, but since this was a little bit of a darker color and we're going with white, I went ahead and gave it two coats. I let it dry in between the coats and I made sure I got down in all those pretty little divots. Back when Chalk Couture first started off, I got this beautiful transfer from them, and it says Mercantile. It has an old-timey scale on it, too, but all we're going to use is just the word Mercantile. And then at the bottom, I'm going to use another little piece of it that says Since 1902. Here I'm just measuring so I can make sure that I've got a good even go. Now, I let my chalk paste dry up. I barely ever use any kind of chalk couture or this type of silkscreen stencils, so I'm just going to use regular old paint. And you can do that, but you just have to do a thin layer. And so what I did was I used that color called Rich Black by Home Decor Paint, and I'm just going to go all over this and make sure that I get it coated really well. Now, I just have to be honest with you. I prefer to use the chalk paste if I had it, but like I said, I let mine dry up and I had to use this. Now, since this is a little bit more of a wet product, you know what I mean? It kind of smeared just a little bit and you'll see what I'm talking about here. When I pulled my stencil off, I got a little bit of a smearing, especially down at the bottom where it has the S. So if this ever happens to you, I'm going to show you how I fix it. I just took my stencil off and I took my blow dryer and I went ahead and dried it really good and then I went right back over it with that color beadboard in the area that I messed up on there. And so the mercantile part is totally fine now once I get it painted and covered back up in the white. And all I'm going to do is lay that bottom stencil back down that has the S on it after everything is dried. And I'm just going to go right back over it again and make sure that I get it right this time. I took these beautiful florals that I get from the Dollar Tree, and it just says greenery on it. It is my absolute favorite florals that they have ever came out with. It almost looks like Dusty Miller with lavender. Now, the stems were too long, so I actually did end up clipping those off. And then I just took this little ribbon that's like a mesh, I guess you could call it, that you get at the Dollar Tree. I wrapped it around the center, and that's what I'm going to glue to the um, top part of my picture right over the word mercantile. I just felt like it was plain unless I put something there and I needed a little bit of something to make it stick out. And these florals just kind of went with the sign and I think it's so pretty. Then the very last thing that I'm going to do to this sign is distress it. I'm going to use my beautiful DIY Black Wax, which is one of my favorite products. And I'm just going to go all the way around the outside and all those little divots with a little distressing brush. Then I just take a regular old paper towel and kind of wipe off the excess. And just for your reference, a picture like this one, I will sell for about $25 to $30 in my booth. I hope you like this one.
die your stories untold come take my hand and walk there with me i know a place where we can be free there is a light shining for you the next one is a little plaque piece that i found at the thrift store for just a dollar it looks like it's a DIY project in the first place. It's just a piece of scrap wood, and it's put on one of those little small coaster type things from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to give it a good coat of this color beadboard. Normally, when I'm painting something that's brown like this, a white color, I'll use a spray shellac on it that I have. But big old dummy me totally forgot to put that shellac on there. But I got lucky because it didn't come through. A lot of times when it dries, if you don't put a shellac, you'll get those brown tannins come through and it just looks old and rotten. And nobody's got time for that. You gotta paint it again. Now my friend Lori over at Milton's Daughter is who I get all of my supplies from or most of my supplies. And I'm going to use this beautiful piece of rice paper from her. Yeah, I bet y'all didn't know that Miss Lori had rice paper. She sent me a ton of it, and it's beautiful. They're so pretty. But I'm going to use this one that's got this little sheep on it because I don't use a lot of sheep decor, and I thought, you know what? It's time to do that. And so I cut this one off from this little piece of rice paper that she sent me. Now, I love to decoupage. It is one of my favorite things in the world to do. And when you use a glue stick, it makes it so easy. And hey, when you're done with this picture, you can just peel it right off if you use a glue stick. So I really do like using these. They seal really well. And when you're using rice paper, you don't have to worry about wrinkles so much. So I really like that. Now I'm just gonna make a little shoestring bow. What I do is I take and make two little loops, just like your shoestrings, and then I'm just gonna tie it through there, and that's like a little shoestring bow. And then you just kinda pull the tails back down and get it the size that you want it. Now, I am notorious for fiddling with these bows forever. So when I finally got it exactly the size that I wanted, I decided I'm gonna use this little burlap bow on the front of it too. And I cut the little tails off kind of short. And I got these little pre-made bows, the little burlap ones from Amazon. And they're in my Amazon cart if you want them. I put that beautiful little lace ribbon up there. And that's my favorite uh, little ribbon from the Dollar Tree is that lace. It just looks so Victorian and so beautiful and vintage. And then I put that little burlap bow right on top. I felt like it needed just a little something. And so I chose this cute little white like florals. I got these from Hobby Lobby and I just cut the very little tip end of it off and I'm going to put it up right behind that little bow because it just looked perfect and I thought it was cute that way. When I got it all situated, I took this little wood piece that's a little welcome sign and I want to say I got this from Walmart and it's probably only a dollar something. If it's not from Walmart, it's definitely from Hobby Lobby, but I'm pretty sure it's Walmart. And so what I did was just kind of dry brushed over it with that white that was left over on my paintbrush. And then I just put a little bit of that Voodoo gel stain that's called Tobacco Road. It's a pretty brown color by Dixie Belle and just went over that welcome sign. Now I've got one of them little makeup daubers that I absolutely love to shade with. I put some of that Voodoo gel stain all over it and I'm just kind of going around and, you know, darkening up the picture a little bit, shading it here and there. I really shaded it right around that picture there. And then I just kind of took a baby wipe and wiped off any part that I didn't want there. Then I'm just going to take that little welcome sign and I'm going to glue it right up in the very front of that picture. That way it kind of looks 3D and it just kind of finished up the picture and gave it a little something that it really needed. 
I decided to take a few more of those little floral sprigs that I put on the top and cut them down and put them behind the word welcome because it made it really pop and really look 3D and it was so cute. Now for your reference, I'll probably sell this for about 12 to 15 bucks. Not bad for just a few minutes time. I hope you like this one. If you're enjoying this content so far, I'd like to ask you to give me a big thumbs up. That's the like button because it really helps me out on YouTube. And hey, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family. We always have so much fun here with me and my little pets, and I would love to Facebook. have you here. Now, we're just going to move right on to this next one. It is a hanging flower pot. It actually goes outside. I've got the bottom of it stuffed with some just some paper bags. That's what I always do to kind of lift it up. Now, I'm going to give it two coats of that color beadboard, and after my first coat, guess what? That brown color came through, so I had to take it outside when it dried and spray it real good with my shellac, and I just used that basic shellac that I get from Walmart. It's a spray. And so I gave this actually two coats, and I really fast forward it most of the time when I'm painting because most of us know how to paint, and I don't want to bore you to death by watching me paint. I just want you to know that I gave this a couple of coats of that beadboard and how I fix it when that brown comes through. Now, this is a piece of rice paper that Lori sent me. Look how pretty this is. It's got like all kinds of French wording on it. And I love that blue and golden white. And I'm going to just put this little picture right on the front of this flower pot. I'm going to take and kind of tear around that picture. Because you know when I'm decoupaging, if you've been around this channel for very long, I don't do straight edges like from the scissors when I'm decoupaging because it looks so much more natural when you just tear it this way. See how pretty that is? And once again, I'm just going to take the easy route and do that glue stick again. It works really well and sticks down, and then you seal it with something when you're finished. That way, if they want to put it outside, it's going to be fine, and it's not going to ruin. So I just laid it down and got it to stick really good. I'm using my uh, Dixie Belle Tobacco Road colored Voodoo Gel Stain. That's what it's called. I know that's long. And I've got it on my little dabber. And I'm just kind of going around. I want these little brown flowers to really stick out and be accentuated. I start off kind of light because you can always add more if you want. And if you notice, I keep adding more. And then I just take a regular old paper towel and kind of wipe it down. And what that's going to do is get that brown to settle down in all the low points. And then where I've wiped it off, that white is still going to stand out. And those two colors together just make the most beautiful shadow. I wanted to add even more. That dabber just wasn't doing it for me. So I put a little bit on the end of my brush there and got the excess off on a baby wipe, you see, and just went all around that area and then just wiped that excess back off again so I could get a really good dark shadowing effect there. The next thing I'm going to do is just take a little bit of floral foam that's cut down perfectly to the size that goes in there, put just a little bit of glue on there, and I'm going to put some Spanish moss on the top of it, and I'm going to go ahead and put my florals in here. I started off with this boxwood pick that I got from Walmart, and I only used one. I cut it down real good. And what I do, anytime that I'm doing any kind of florals, I will put the tallest one right in the middle, 
And whatever I put on the right side, I put exactly in the same spot on the left side. So if you notice, I put one in the middle that was taller and then two on the right side and two on the left side right in the exact same spot. Now here I have some of that stuff called greenery from the Dollar Tree. It's so pretty. And I wanna use these beautiful yellow little flowers in it. So I cut them down and I'm gonna do the exact same principles. I'm gonna put one on the left side here and I'm gonna put a stem that's the same size right on the right side. If you stick with those basic principles, your flowers are gonna come out pretty every time. So you see, I just put one in the center there and I try to make it a little bit taller. And then like I said, whatever goes on the right goes on the left. Whatever goes in the front goes in the back. You just kind of do the same thing on both sides and always fluff them out as much as you want during the process and just kind of step back and look at it until your eyes are happy. And then when you get it the way that you want it, you know it's right. I felt that it needed a little bit more, and I had four more little picks on another stem, so I cut those four off. I put two in the back and two in the front. Now I'm going to take this gorgeous antique paste that Miss Lori sent me from Milton's Daughter. It's a Pentart product, and it's gold. Now this is a lot cheaper than that rub and buff that everybody uses, but it's the exact same thing. And I like to use my finger when I'm shading and stuff because there is nothing like a finger to get right in there and put it where you want it to go. So I just put a little bit of that on my finger and kind of went around. In all the home decor stuff that I've been reading up lately, gold is really coming in like these gold accents and stuff like this. And Miss Lori sent me this gold color, and she also sent me an antique bronze color that's really pretty, and I'm excited about trying it. You guys should try out some of these products. This is very inexpensive, and it goes a long, long way. I'll probably put about 8 to $10 on this one. I hope you like it. Yes, everyone needs a friend So let's come together Celebrate each other Stand united as one We lift our hands up and pray Lay all our love before him with all of our faith He is the change within us There is a light let him lead the way Lift our hands up and pray today Now this last one is such an easy project I don't even know if I can call it a project But I have this beautiful old pot that I got I think it was from the thrift store Or maybe it was from the antique dealer It's been a couple of years and I can't remember But I'm going to use this beautiful rice paper That's got this French theme And it's got those beautiful blue and gold tones in it And all I did was just wet the end of a small paintbrush And I went around the area that I want to tear off And so I go around and very carefully I just tear off the piece that I'm going to decoupage onto this cute little pot. This is going to be so pretty on the front of this, and I didn't want to ruin it by painting it. A lot of times when I decoupage, I will do a, bat, a white background because it really makes your decoupage stand out. But like I said, I didn't want to ruin this pot. It was so pretty. And once again, I'm just using the good old trusty glue stick. I go all the way around my image and make sure that I get it everywhere. And then I'm just going to lay it down exactly where I want it. Now, a lot of times when you have an uneven area like the way that this pot is, you just have to be careful and take your time. And you have to use your scissors and actually cut into it like I'm doing here. I'm just going to make a little slit and I'm going to lay it down. I always start off in the middle and make sure that that point is, you know, 
down the way that it's supposed to be. And when it's like this and it's an uneven surface and it's kind of hard to decoupage, all I do is just use my scissors and cut as many slits in it that I need to. And I just use my fingers because rice paper is so forgiving and it's so easy to work with. You don't have many wrinkles. And if you do have a couple of wrinkles on something like this, it's okay because you can barely see it anyway. And if you don't have a keen eye for it, you can't tell at all. But this turned out absolutely gorgeous. You've seen how easy it was, and I'll probably sell it for at least $15. I hope you like this last one. your nap. That's him making that noise, by the way. He said, I've had enough of you, girl. <laughs> I told you Roxy would aggravate the pee out of the new puppy, and that's exactly what she does. Watch her, here she comes. If you hung on this long, I just want to thank you so much for coming and spending a little time with me okay, and getting to see a little sneak peek into my chaos. I hope I can get everything ready in a month's time Roxy. to go sell. And if you guys are wanting to sell too, I hope that you got some good tips and some inspiration on some really easy things to throw together that you can go and take to the festivals and sell yourselves. Like I'm not really sure nice. right now if my next video will be out on Thursday or Friday, but it will be at 6.30. Just be looking on the post that I make and on the community tab, and I will let you know when I figure out which day I'm going to post. But I love y'all, and I hope that you have a blessed week, and I will see you very soon. Bye, guys.